my name is Wayne and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about changing the front brake pad on a W222 or 2018 Mercedes-Benz S560. It's going to be a little bit different from the W222 um, 2016 S550 and uh, we'll go over those changes and um, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and change the view and um, show you what needs to be done. And of course before we start, um, you know I, I believe in safety. You want to put a brick um, two bricks, uh, one in the uh, left right and the right right uh, brick there and then we're going to put another brick in the front right um, to the front of the tie so the car don't move forward and um, I'm going to be using my low profile jack and the reason for that is because the car is, you know, the pump is off and so the car is a little bit lower to the ground I'm not going to use the other jack, my go-to jack but the low profile jack is just as good I'm gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and zoom into the, the part number for the brake pad. It's um, A000420106. And of course, I have my sensor, which I'm not gonna use because I didn't get the brake um, light uh, in my dashboard to change the brake sensor. Whenever you have the um, brake light come on saying change your, your brakes, you have to change the sensor. But since that light didn't come on, I'm gonna preserve it and. Um, Go ahead. So let's go ahead and just uh, take off the front tire and um, show you what needs to be done. All right. So the lugs are loosened, and uh, what we're going to do? We're going to jack up the car. And if you notice, the low profile jack has a hole in it, and the reason for the hole is it comes with this rod. And basically, what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put into that hole. And just come in here and slide it through and leave it just like that. And um, one of the reasons is this does slide back. I mean, the I don't know why they designed it like that, but um, the rod prevents the jack from going all the way completely down to the floor. So let's go ahead and take off the, the tire and see what the brake pad looked like. And looking at the brake pad now, it looks very low. We'll just verify it once we take off this tire. All right, and yeah, it is low. You can take a good look at it. All right, and before we do anything else, we're going to take off this cover because this is where the master cylinder is located. I'm going to go ahead and pop this little rivet out, take this out, do the same thing for this, do it for this one right here, and we're going to do this last one right here. Go ahead, now we have access to the master cylinder. We'll put that cover there. And what I normally do is just loosen it. You can leave it like that. Leave it like that so when you compress the, the piston, the fluid comes up and it doesn't uh, cause any damage. It's free to flow. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the steering wheel to my right so the caliper can actually um, stick out towards me and I have easy access to it. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to turn the steering wheel to the right so the caliper can actually face towards me. It'll be easier to um, get to. I'm going to go ahead, start the engine. I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the right. Turn off the car. Come out. And now the caliper is facing towards me, which is what I want. And of course, we can't forget the 
brake fluid, everything by Mercedes. Um, you want to get this from the dealership. So, and that's about it. So let's um, let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to remove, let's get down a little bit closer, is the center bolt, uh, which is right here. Gonna remove that. And all of a sudden, I'm going to knock these pins out. That's actually holding the brake pad in place. So yeah, it looks pretty low. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I'm going to remove this bolt first. This bolt here, this is a, um, say what size do we go? We got a half inch um, socket. Put it here, fits nicely. We're gonna take a 3 8 and of course we're gonna use our leverage bar. So I'm gonna put the 3 8 here. We're gonna put it here. And we're gonna use that for leverage. So when we're gonna actually, we're gonna pull it back towards me to loosen up the boat. Right, this actually comes out. I'm gonna take something like this and basically uh, put it here and basically bang this uh, straight out. All right, so now that we bang that out with the little chisel, um, what we're gonna do is just pull it completely out. Let me go ahead and remove these pins here as well. And <clears throat> one thing I want you to know, um, when I actually move these uh, parts out, I actually put them on the ground in the same direction as they're facing so I don't get confused when I'm putting it back. All right, so I got most of the pin out. Let me see if I can take this out by hand, and I can. Put this here at the top. To designate that goes on the top. This one is going to go on the bottom. I'm going to leave it on the ground just like that. Now we have access to the brake pad, and we're just going to slide them out. And All right, so we'll see if I can pull this out by one hand. I'm going to take little pliers here and actually pull it. All right, doing top and bottom, top and bottom, alternately until the whole pad comes out. And we have this. So, brake pads are um, definitely uh, worn. Let's compare them. Let's go ahead and open up the box. Take this out. Line them up. And you probably want to wear gloves because I understand that um, the brake pads are cancerous. Special tool to actually um, push that back. I actually have two. Um, one that I've always used and this new one that I got, um, which is on the bottom. We'll see how that uh, pans out, but um, we'll see how it goes. And, and both of them I got from Amazon. So let's go back to this. We can go ahead and pull out the second um, second brake pad. All right, so the second brake pad is easier to come out. Just pull it out same motion and now it's out and we put this on the ground so that will be there the new brake pad of course will take face in the direction that we pulled it out make life easier same thing here take this we're gonna pull this out we're gonna pull this out so let's go ahead and, and insert the tool and see which tool will be best to uh, push those uh, piston back all right, so the first tool I'm going to use is what I've used on in 2016. And basically, what I did when I, if you take off the caliper, then you can push this inside. Even if you spin the arm, you can still get a piece and you can still do the job. It's a little bit awkward. Um, so the job will still be done, but you're just going to be hitting the rotor. So let's not do that. Let's try the second tool that I got from Amazon. And of course, as you can see, it's a better fit. And basically, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it in. And of course, this handle, as you turn it, you can go up and down. So let's go ahead and put it in and see what it, what it actually looks like to push the uh, piston back. All right, so the second tool by far is the best choice. Let's come in here and actually take a look. 
and the arms actually go into where the pistons are to push it down you can, I can actually go up and all I'm gonna do is take the lever and turn it and um, push those um, pistons back and I don't know how many of you saw the 2016 video how to change the front brake pad but looking at how I'm doing the 2018 um, S560 which one do you think is uh, better for you so I'll let you make that choice on your own but let's go ahead and push these uh, piston back and um, let's get started all right and as you can see I've already started turning the lever and I'm going upwards um, as you can see I'm coming here turn like that come here like that come down come down you notice the arms now actually pushing the piston back and the reason why we're pushing the piston back so we can fit the new brake pad in it which is a little bit thicker okay so now what we're going to do we're going to loosen it this comes out very easily let's see if we need to push anything back and looking at this like we do have to push the bottom one down so I'm going to go ahead and put the tool back in make sure the bottom one is flush just like the top all right, so we got it down. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it. And you notice, I don't know if you can see, the pistons are actually being pushed back. Okay, let's go ahead and take this out now. Alright, so everything is pushed back, so the new brake pad should easily fit into that. We come up here, and you notice that the brake level is at the top, and it was a little bit lower. Um, let's go ahead and push that back there. We're going to go ahead and put in the brake pad, and notice direction. This one is our front, and this one, when I pull it out, I pull it out like that. So that's going to be like that. Same direction. We're going to come in here, move these, boop plastic tabs gotta make sure when we put in the brake pad we're gonna also keep the heat shield on and we'll take a look at the thickness of it so and I like normally when I drive I like my brakes to be tight and so you can see the thickness of this brake pad so um, and that's just how I am I, I like my brakes brake uh, when I step on the brakes, I want your head to go through the windshield. So that, that's how I drive. Hold on. All right, so the new brake pad will just slide right in. I think most of you who are watching this video will probably prefer this since it's a lot easier. You don't have to take the whole uh, caliper off to get to it. And um, now let's fix, fix this heat shield. All right, so everything's in place. The front brake pads in and come down here. That's where it's supposed to be. We're gonna do the same thing for the um, second brake pad. We're just gonna slide it right in, and then we're gonna put back all the little components that go on top of it. All right, second pad. We're gonna do second pad. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Remove the plastic uh, protector. Of course, you want to keep the heat shield on. We're going to insert it this way because um, it needs to face the rotor. Okay, so both brake pads are in. Um, we're going to go ahead and put back all the little uh, components that's on it and then, um, then we'll be done. The other side of the car, the right front right, has a sensor. That's where that hole is for. And we're just going to reuse the sensor because we didn't get a brake light indicator in the car. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and push these pins in. Make sure everything lined up. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a hammer and bang it. Okay, make sure those pins are the way they're supposed to be. You see the hook, one on the top, one on the bottom. We're going to take it, hook it to that, come back here, do the same thing. All 
All right, so I basically just took a, a screwdriver and came in here and just pushed this underneath that until it click. But um, on the right hand side, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently where I actually put the pins through and then put that in. So now the last piece that we're gonna put in is this piece here. We're just gonna go ahead and slide it through. It's gonna go over this. We're gonna push this down and go on the other side and tighten it up. All right, so we got the screw in. Just gonna take that and just bang it to the back just a little just tap it All right one thing i have to mention about this last bolt you do have to line up the uh edge of it so that it can go in all the way rather than just part way and so if you need to turn it um take a pliers and you turn it until it straightens out and i mean like that so we can go ahead and see if we can actually push that back in all right so when we actually tap it in it actually fits in now we take the screw and actually screw this in and i'm gonna say about the torque um i'll put the torque um dimensions in the in the description of the of the video so those of you who are um, torquing it All right, and I'm actually gonna take this, put it this way. And tighten it just one more time, like this. All right. Take this out, we're basically done. All right, so we'll jack up the car, put on back the tire. Go on the other side where the sensor is and we'll uh, change both the, bat, the brake pad and the sensor. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start the car again and straighten the wheel so we can actually put on the tire um, actually straight. And let me go ahead and just tighten this. I'll loosen it when I get to the other side. Now we have a straight tire. We'll go ahead, drag it up, put the rims back on, work on the other side. All right, and those of you who can remember from the 2016 video, a little wheel alignment makes it a lot easier to put the, t the tires on the, on the car without any hassle. Go ahead and do that. And this is, I also got this from um, Amazon as well. So I'll put the description in the video link. And those of you who are uh, watching the video for the first time, whenever you take your um, lug bolts off, um, you're supposed to torque the, um, those as well. So uh, just to uh, just to say that everything is tight. All right, so we're on the front right. We're gonna do the same exact thing. The only difference is we're gonna deal with the sensor. Uh, take off the wheel. Um, Loosen the lug, uh, lug nut, take off the wheel, and um, do the same thing, but this time we'll deal with the center. So, jacking up the car, if you didn't know before, you, you'll know now. Come under here, find this little um, indentation, and the jack point is right where I have my hand. Matter of fact, you can, I don't know if you can actually see it, but this is where we put the jack, right, right in this area. Alright, so that's, that's where the jack goes. And one last thing, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the bolt, front bolt, which is here. And this prevents the car from moving forward while we're working on the car. And remember, we have the two rear brake and the two uh, rear tire to prevent, to prevent the car from going backwards. We're going to go ahead, we're going to put this brake in the front left, so now we're all squared away. We'll go ahead, jack up the car, take the tire off and get started.
All right, so we got this wheel off. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in the car, start the engine, turn the steering wheel to the left so the caliper can face towards me. And of course, if we zoom in, we can actually see the sensor that we're gonna reuse because there's no indicator in the dashboard. If there is an indicator in the dashboard, you, you have to change the uh, wear pattern indicator. Otherwise, it'll just, after you change the brake pad, it'll just continue showing in your dashboard. So you gotta make sure. Um, if you're gonna order brake pad, order a sensor. Um, just in case and if you don't use it you just keep it as a spare part all right so let's go ahead and turn that steering wheel all right so we're in the car and of course that steering wheel is gonna be kind of hard to turn if the engine is not running I'm gonna turn to the left turn off the engine I don't know if some of you can remember where Back in the days, there was no power steering. You was the power steering, and um, very difficult to turn that steering wheel unless you were strong. All right, so if we go in a little bit closer, um, what do you see? Let me go ahead and actually turn on the turn on the light. Uh, so we have uh, two bolts here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna knock out these pins. One, two. Um, of course, we know that's that is a um, half inch. half inch here and then for this one this one's the eight millimeter all right so that's eight millimeter we're gonna go ahead and take out the center first because it's the easiest and then remove this and then we'll knock out the pins and then we'll slide both brake pads out put in the new one it's that simple and oh before we even start that let's go ahead and loosen out the cap because we don't want anything to go ahead and just loosen this out put it there leave it like that all right all right so I have my little um, leverage here uh, my mini uh, breaker bar and I'm gonna um, pull the uh, ratchet um, to my right, you know, left, right, and to loosen out the bolts. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we'll take that out. Before you completely move the sensor, we're gonna go ahead and just pull this out. All right, so this is the sensor that we're gonna keep. I'm gonna go ahead and actually we'll, we'll we'll take this off just to keep it in a safe area. We don't really need to take it off because um, we're not really taking off the caliper. We'll, we'll leave this here. We're gonna loosen uh, this one second. I'm gonna take my little mini uh, breaker bar and just. Loosen that out. Okay. All right. So all I'm gonna do is gonna take my hammer, take my little tool right here, put it in the pin, and I'm gonna go ahead and bang the pins out. The same thing for this. We're gonna take a little tool in here, put it in here, and come over here and and bang it until this comes out. Now this actually comes out, and notice these pins, like I said before, we're going to take them out, put them on the floor in the direction that they're facing. So let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and take out the top one. Top one comes out. It's going to face that way. We're going to take out the bottom one. The bottom one, what we're going to do, if we're having trouble removing them, Take like a pliers, come here, and just wrestle it out until it actually comes out. Take it, 
have it face the direction. And the same thing, go ahead and do that. Okay. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take out everything. I'm gonna take out the middle piece first, and of course I'm gonna push this down like that and just slide this out. And this comes out. And notice the direction that this has to go into the hole and you have to, as you can see, it has to line up. So if you put it in, it has to go in straight so it can be flush with, with that. So this comes down, this comes out, and of course, these brake pad, they come out. We'll do the one with the sensor first. Do the, the bottom one, top one, bottom, top, bottom, top. All right, and this is just about out. All right, so we're gonna put this on the ground facing the waist position. Take it, put it like that. We're gonna do the same thing for the one this side, bottom, and then the top. Bottom, and keep alternating until it actually comes out. All right, so that's it. Now you can see the piston that's basically exposed. We're gonna put this on the ground the way it was facing, which is like that. And so when we put everything back together, you know um, what's what, then what goes where. And so is the piston. So that's a good, good rule of thumb. First thing we're gonna do is gonna change the center. We're gonna put it on the new brake pad and put it into, actually after we push in the piston, uh, we're gonna put it back into the, the slot. Alright, so we have a special uh, compression tool that we ordered from Amazon. I put it in, put it into the slot, and I tighten it so at least it's going to have both pistons. Uh, we're going to actually um, change the uh, orientation so you can see a little bit of it. Alright, All right, so the piston tool is already in there. What I'm going to do is just turn it. This goes down just like that. Let me take this off so you can see better. Go down. And you can actually see the piston pushing back. Turn it. This drops like that. Turn it. Alright, so now my pistons are completely in. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Let me loosen it back again. Let me take it out. And of course, the bottom piston needs to be pushed in just a little bit. Let me go ahead and loosen it so I can reinsert it. All right. Both pistons are pushed in. You just do the top one just a little bit. Just a little bit. Go ahead and. Okay. So now everything is pushed back. We go ahead and take it out. And if you actually see what it looked like, um, both pistons are pushed back in. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to take the sensor that's in this brake pad. I'm actually going to swap it out. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take these out. Plastic hole out, takes the hole out. We're gonna take the center, take from this and put it to this one. Here's the little plies here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come here, I'm just gonna push this up like that so we don't damage the center. 
take this, I'm gonna hold this here, take it and the slot lines up, push it down. And of course we're gonna put this back in. This is gonna go right back in. It's gonna go in just like that. This pen is actually gonna go in this way. Right, <clears throat> so the pin is actually going to go in this way, just like that. This comes out, of course. We want to make sure that this goes in here, just like that. Alright, pins go like that, same thing here. Go ahead and bang everything back in. We're going to take our sensor, and of course our sensor has two uh, pins, which is here, and they line up with this. Actually, it'll be straight. Take this here. Pins line them straight. Later, this comes here, and this comes like this, and this screws in. I'm gonna make sure this center is right there. Screwed in tight. Take this. And remember what I said about this. This should be lined up. It's going to be lined up straight. Actually, it's going to be like that. So it actually can go in. We're going to go ahead. We're going to push this down. Make sure this is continually straight. Push this down. And it's going to be flush like that. Now we're going to take the screw, this guy, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten it. Tighten it by hand. We'll go ahead. We're going to tighten this, come here, and don't over tighten it, you don't want to sh strip it. That's the 8mm, and this one is the half. Take this, now this one you do want to give it a, a good time. I'm going to take my mini breaker bar tighten it just like that alright so we're basically done alright so we'll go ahead about done and um, everything will look good alright so what we're going to do now use our handy alignment tool go ahead put it in and we'll put our tire back
All right. Check the reservoir to see if. All right, so that's full. No need to add any more to that. I'm just gonna wipe around it. And of course, in your trunk, you should have just about everything you need, including a little cloth to wipe stuff down with. Make everything nice and neat and pretty. Now we're just gonna put the panel back. Make sure this is tight, okay. Put the panel back. Line up the screws. Screw, line it up. Line up this screw. Oh, what you call a rivet. Then the last one will be right here. Alright, we all done. Close the hood. And we'll close the trunk. Start the car again. And let the car basically auto rise. All right, for those of you where the car, you turn on the car and it's not auto leveling, what you can do is put it on the service road, drive it on the service road, not on the highway, but on the service road, and the car will basically uh, correct itself. And this is a, a good example of it. I uh, remember before the front was almost down. And the um, same as the back. So right now the car is um, basically level because I drove around the, I just, you know, swung around the block, came back into the driveway. So um, hopefully you learned a lot. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.